been a while now since last time I released the first Medium video and I got a lot of amazing feedback. I made a little promise I think at one point in the video that if it hits a certain amount of likes and subscribers that I'd make a part two and it did. The video actually did really well and I never ended up making part two. I was getting a lot of messages from people. The majority of people who sent me messages uh, were either saying thank you or they were having issues applying some of the things that I taught them and um, I went into their blogs and I was actually able to read several of the articles that they uploaded and I was able to pinpoint some of the uh, main issues that they were running into so if you are struggling in increasing your views on medium your engagement rates uh, you want to grow your blog on medium.com a little bit more get more views more exposure more likes and claps uh, this is the perfect video for you I'm not going to make it too long, I'm going to cut straight to the chase, I'm going to get right to the point. We want to learn how can we increase the retention rate, the reading rate on Medium, how to increase engagement overall in views. And I have blogs that accumulated over 30,000 views in a span of 6 to 8 months and it was all organic. Uh, I was able to do that using the systems that I'm going to discuss in this video as well as systems that we discussed in the first part. Um, and if you're interested in seeing that video and you haven't seen it yet, the link is going to pop up somewhere on the screen or you can find it in the description below. But before we get to the chase, I want you guys to know that in the first video I shared a lot of tools that you can use to promote your content. And a lot of people were using those and they were finding a lot of success, but then it wasn't sustainable. When I was reading a lot of the articles, I noticed that what people were missing is a proper blog structure. They're missing the cover image that grabs people's attention. They're, they're missing the hook that's going to grab people's attention. They're missing a lot of things that's going to stimulate this urge and this excitement, this dopamine rush in their uh, reader system that would entice them to get involved and get engaged with the content that they're reading. One of the first things that we want to take a deeper look at is the Medium algorithm. Just like any other social platform, Medium has an algorithm. On Instagram, there's a certain ratio of people who saw the post, how many people liked it, how many people saved it, how many people commented, and that ratio will tell the AI of Instagram what content is actually can be popular or is trending or would get a lot of likes and a lot of attention and then the system would start pushing that content and this eventually can go viral. Same thing goes for Medium. There are systems put in place, there are algorithms that people can use and leverage for their content to show up in front of more people, get more views, more engagement, etc. So the way the Medium algorithm works is very similar to any other platform. There is a certain number of people who are going to see the headline of your blog. Uh, what's the percentage of people that are going to click on it? How enticing is the headline? That's why the title is important. Using a title that strikes people's attention is important. I'm going to give you a quick random example. Let's say I'm making a blog about uh, five ways to get rid of procrastination. And the title can be five ways you can use to reduce your procrastination. Another one can be five alarming signals that your procrastination is eating away your life. Dash, and you can't even notice it. Something similar to that. Just when you look at the difference between both headlines, one of them grabs attention, one of them demands immediate action, the other doesn't, right? So that's the first thing. When you have an enticing headline or title, that's when people will start engaging. A lot of people will start clicking on it and then the ratio of people clicking on the title to begin with, not necessarily reading the blog, but this starts to go up. So you're going up in the medium algorithm. You have a higher chance of them showing this blog to more people. The second thing is the actual blog cover. A lot of times when people go on the blog, the first thing that they're going to look at is not the text, it's not the headline, they already read that, it's the cover image. They're going to look at the cover image in more detail because on Medium, when it's featured, the cover image is very tiny. And I like to use images that also grab people's attention. They command people's attention. A very good example to take a look at is news channels. 
the way that the news channels start and how they start the highlights with the most dramatic events, they do that to grab people's attention. So the, the imagery and the content that we use in the beginning of the blog, that's what determines if people are going to read throughout the rest of it or not. You can have the most immaculate, most perfect body of a blog you've ever written in your life that anybody has ever seen ever in their life. But you have a title and a cover image and an introduction that are not enticing. The article is not going to go nowhere. The blog is not going to perform that well. Reason being is because people's attention span is a lot shorter. You have about 4 to 12 seconds to make a first impression. Within 4 to 12 seconds, people decide whether this is something that they want to read or not. This is why the headline then the cover image and some of the images, some examples are going to pop up on the screen next to me um, to kind of show you some of the cover images that I've used. And as soon as you see them, you can see how those would grab people's attention. Picture a, a Marvel magazine back in 1980 that was best-selling. The cover image looked wicked, right? Imagine newspapers and journals that went to get a lot of sales. The front page of the newspaper, there was always a big picture and a big title with a big highlight that emphasizes the most dramatic events that the journal is covering or the magazine is going through. Same thing. You want to use an image that slaps. You want to use an image that demands attention. You want to use an image that stimulates curiosity. Maybe you have a picture of, let's say you're making a blog, an interview with two entrepreneurs, right? You put the cover image as their photo, but you blur their images. If you just blur their images for no freaking reason, people are more curious. They're like, why are these people's faces blurred? They read the title, it's enticing, let me read. Who are these people? People are curious, people are driven by curiosity. That's the main thing that stimulates dopamine inside of their system. That's why they say, when you reach your goal, you're not motivated anymore. Motivation comes in within the journey, right? And same thing for people. You need to keep them curious. You need to keep them excited as to what is coming up next in order to really grab their attention. And once you grab their attention within the first four to 12 seconds and they start reading, then it depends on how good the blog is, obviously. And we're gonna get to that towards the end of the video. But what's most important is that, keep it in mind that those first four to 12 seconds, the headline, the cover image, and the introduction, they need to be very powerful. They need to demand attention. They need to raise curiosity. They need to, they need to make people feel stupid if they don't read more or make people feel as if they're going to miss out on something very important if they don't continue reading. Once you do that, automatically, the engagement rate is going to go up and it's going to work towards your favor with the medium algorithm and your videos are going to start your blog sorry are going to start getting get a mix up with youtube get more engagement and more views and more claps and i'm going to show you some examples later on um, towards mid video uh, over on zoom to kind of show you the stats on some of the blogs and how the ones where i used a title that simulates curiosity as well as a cover image the introduction was good and all that how those performed a lot better than other blogs where I did. Some of my best performing articles are articles that got curated by Medium. Medium actually, I sent it to the curating team and, and I'm not sure what the process itself is called, but the blog becomes curated and Medium would push more traffic on it. Now, one of the main things that the obstacles that, that I saw people running into when I was reading some of the blogs is that People are making some spelling mistakes, some grammar mistakes, and this can be easily solved by Grammarly. You can get Grammarly for free. I'm going to put the link in the description below. You can get it for free, and you will not need anybody to proofread your content. You will make sure that your content is properly set up, because when the Medium team is going through an article, even if it's, again, the most amazing article they've ever read in their life, if they notice that there's grammar mistakes, they're not going to push this content to become curated because 
it looks so bad on their end that they are pushing curated content from medium.com that has grammar mistakes and spelling issues. You know, so based on that, you want to make sure that the spelling, the grammar, everything is good, and this can easily be solved using Grammarly, or you can go on Fiverr.com, hire a proofreader. Uh, it's really not that expensive, but just make sure that your content has been proofread and everything is good in terms of grammar, spelling, structure. Number three, once you release your blog and it's good and you submit it to see if Medium is going to pick it as a curated blog, you want to submit it to as many publications as possible. It's free, it takes literally 30 seconds, and it will help you a lot if your content gets published on within other publications. Um, one of my best blogs that you're going to see on the screen right now, if I'm not mistaken, it's the um, uh, related to the brain capacity. Do we only use 10% of our brain capacity? And this... I submitted this to, um, back then it was called the Startup um, Publishing. Uh, right now I think it's called something different, we're going to check it in the video in a second. Uh, but this video performed so well just because it was, it was featured on this publication. So that being said, it doesn't cost a dime, it costs 30 seconds for you to go in and check all the different publications within the categories from which you're writing the blog for, pick some of those, send the blog to them, and see if they would add it to their publication. If you actually write something enticing, and that's the purpose of, the vi of this video, if you actually write something enticing, and that's the purpose of this video, is to help you write enticing content, then a lot of those publications would actually want to feature your content because you will also bring them more retention and more views and more fans. So it's a win-win strategy. The only thing you need is to make sure that your content is good enough to cross that border and start becoming curated, becoming uh, featured on different publications, and then the traction of people reading it will help push it to get more views and more engagement. Now, for the second section of this video where we're gonna talk about how to structure your blog properly, we're gonna be transitioning to the screen back there. Alrighty, so now getting a bit more to the technical side of things, I wanted to share one of my best blogs as a good example for you guys to see what I meant by everything I said. Now, first, you can notice that the title, Do We Only Use 10% of Our Brain Capacity with a Mind Blown Emoji? This title, in and on itself, would grab people's attention. If you're scrolling and somebody on Instagram says, Today we're going to talk about whether or not we only use 10% of our brain capacity. Boom, enticing. You're like, oh, do we or do we not? And you want to know a little bit more. And then the mind-blowing emoji that kind of shows them that whatever they're going to read is going to be mind-blowing and shocking. And then the cover image. Oh my God, the lady's freaking out. It's like, okay, what are we about to find out in this article? This, this just raises their level of curiosity to a whole different level. And that's exactly what we spoke about, right? Now, this part right here is what I would consider the main introduction to the blog, right? After that, it's up to you and how good the blog is. But first, headline, second, cover image, and third, the introduction. In this article, I'm going to introduce you to the real potential of the human brain that you have access to. People are like, okay, this paragraph right here gets everybody, and you guys will know why as soon as I read it. I wanna start off by telling you some things about your brain that you might not currently know. Right. There is this experiment where lab mice were conditioned in a certain way. A bell would ring, then the mice would get an electrical shock. I know a lot of you right now are thinking that this is unethical, and I agree with you. The experiment is not very recent, but stay with me for just a minute here. The shock experiment was conducted on the lab mice for a period of time until they gave birth to newborn mice. Those newborn mice were also exposed to the electrical shock experiment. Same thing happened again. They kept receiving the electrical shocks after a bell rings until the second generation of lab mice gave birth to the third generation of lab mice. The third generation of lab mice had the same experiment conducted on them as well, until they gave birth to the fourth generation of lab mice. Here's where it gets interesting. The fourth generation of lab mice were not exposed to the electrical shock treatment. They never heard the bell, and they never got any electrical shocks. However, when they heard the bell rings, they flinched. Let that sink in for a second. How is that even possible? As soon as you read that, you're like, damn, how, how is that possible? 
And that's what pushed people to read more and more and more. And this article got featured in the startup uh, as one of the medium publications and gained a lot of traction. First, because it was featured there and it was featured there because it met certain elements. The introduction slapped, cover image was good. The title was enticing, it grabbed people's attention. And all of those elements were met, right? As soon as you do that, you're gonna take your, um, your conversion rate and you're gonna take your engagement rate to a whole different level. And then it's up to you. You guys can see there's 468 people who clapped at this because the article itself was really good. So after that, it is up to you guys, right? If you have an enticing, a good article with good information, after you grab people's attention, they're gonna keep reading. I'm gonna take a look. Take a quick look here at some of our stats. So I haven't posted on Medium in a very long time. It's been three years, um, give or take. But you guys can see, maybe we can sort them out by views. That's the article that we just looked at earlier. Do we only use 10% of our brain capacity, 20K views, and seven kick ass exercises for emotional intelligence. So same thing applies. Right here, I'm using a different cover, cover image because I'm promoting one of the products after the article picked up uh, traction. Seven kick-ass exercises for emotional intelligence. One of the biggest breakthroughs I had in my research, yada, yada, yada. It's the same. You guys can go on my profile, read a bunch of the most, um, the best performing articles, and you guys will understand exactly what I mean. And you will notice as well that in some of my least performing articles, 32, 33, relationships and the meaning of life. What does that even mean? It doesn't stimulate any kind of attention. It doesn't, it's just a title, right? It's like, it's literally an essay almost. From emotional intelligence to absurdity. What does that even mean? Test your intelligence and the meaning of life. What? Procrastination, a double-edged sword. What? <laughs> but then you look at articles that got more traction. Why 110 million people die each year. The secret behind lasting motivation. The real reason you're failing. Motivated to procrastinate. A deadly cycle. The hidden secrets of neuroplasticity revealed. Why your brain is forcing you to... You guys can art cracking the laziness code. The deadly procrastination traps. You guys can already... Superhuman memory. How to use 100% of your brain capacity. You guys can already see why those articles picked up more traction. Take a look at... Oh, take a look at this why your brain is forcing you to fail. And again, you guys can go on the profile, read them. Same thing, deadly procrastination. A vicious cycle that affects over 2 billion people around the world. Image. And you guys can understand now how it works. After that, it's up to you. You decide through your blog how good it's going to be, how enticing it's going to be, and how much traction it's going to pick up. But most importantly, you want to make sure that you grab people's attention at first, and that's when it's going to play to your favor. And keep in mind, I haven't posted on Medium in about two and a half, three years. And you guys can see every single month, there's consistent views coming in. And I don't do anything. So once the articles, once you grab people's attention and the articles pick up, there's good information within, there are always going to be getting more and more views, literally on the Google SEO. Right this. There you go. We only use 10% of our rate capacity, medium.com. My article pops up as the first one. A lot of people are going to be looking at that. A lot of people refer to medium.com as, in, as an independent blogging platform. They're going to literally search for certain questions with medium.com next to it. I'm not sure. I think without it, I don't think the article would show. Yeah, it needs to be a little bit more specific, but you guys get the point. So all of this taken into consideration, this is how you guys can... Take all the tools from the first video, combine them with the mix of elements that we spoke about in this video, and you're going to be taking your medium journey to a whole different level. And that was it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video just like you enjoyed part one. And again, if you haven't seen part one, the link is going to be right up there. Go check it out. There's a lot of tips and tricks that you can use there if you want to learn how to promote your content now that you learned how to structure it properly. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more similar content, make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.